the tools we use may change very often or seldomly and importing data from legacy tools to a new tool can be an important endeavor to make sure that all the historic data that you have within your project management system or CRM or content management remains intact and always available for you also in the new tool. In this video, we are looking at how to import data from a CSV file, which is a file that you can get from any spreadsheet and most of the database based tools out there into Coda, as well as how you can natively and directly import data from tools like Notion or Confluence or Airtable into Coda with the native importer. Here is an empty Coda page in the sandbox doc. At the top right corner, there is the insert menu. And this menu allows us to get data from different tools. And essentially, there are three levels of importing data into Coda. One is importing a CSV or markdown file. Those are very popular ways of formatting data that are almost always exportable from any software out there and then importable into Coda. And the second layer of importing data into Coda is through the native importer of tools such as Notion, Excel, or Sheets, Google Docs, Confluence, Airtable, and Trello right now. And the third layer of importing data into Coda is by using Coda Packs. And these imports are a bit more advanced and they can also be ongoing syncs of data because Coda Packs take advantage of the Coda API to sync data between a third party tool and your Coda tables or docs or specific pages within your docs. So depending on your use case and level of advancement and needs, you may consider the different options and select which one is most appropriate for your use case. The most basic form of import and the most popular one in my experience is importing CSV data, for example. And that's what we're gonna look at in the first part of this video how you can import a CSV file into Coda, turning it into a table. And we are also looking at a bit of an edge case where we want to import data. And at the same time, we want to maintain relation columns and values within the imported data. Because for this use case, I'm going to use a CSV where there are organizations, these are companies, and a separate CSV that contains contacts within those organizations. So there is a relationship between organizations and contacts. There are two separate CSVs and I want to import them and be as effective as possible in maintaining those relation to specify which contact belongs to which organization. So let's select the CSV import. And here we have the first option that is select the file that you want to import. And the second menu item is the import location. You can either select an existing table in the dock where you are, or you can create a new table, which is what we want to select in this use case because I want to import organizations and this table is not in my dock yet. And if the CSV file has header rows, so the first row is a header, then we want to toggle this on. In my case, that is the case. And so I'm going to keep this as it is. And I'm going to select the file right now, which is called organizations. And that is the file that I import organizations 100. I'm going to click on next. It contains 100 organizations. And you can see that the table was quickly created. The first column from the CSV file is used as the display column or the primary key of my table. Although in this case, that is not the most appropriate choice. So I'm going to just change it to the name. I want the name to be the display column on this table. And we actually do not need the index. So I'm going to delete this column here. The organization ID, this could be useful, although maybe we could automatically generate it. And that is out of the scope for now. So let's just hide this column for now. We have the name, which we use as a primary key, also because later on, when we import contacts, we want to have a quick way of referencing the organizations within those contacts, because each contact is related to one or multiple organizations. And so because I know that my CSV for contacts contains the names of companies related to those contacts, I'm going to set the name as the primary key because that will facilitate my work when setting the relations between organizations and contacts. And then here are some other properties. I can see the website, for example, is of link type. So that is correct. Country, text, description, text, founded, text. It could be a number. For now, let's keep it as text. The industry, this maybe could be a select column. And the number of employees, this could be in fact, a number and it is formatted as a number indeed. So that's all we have, organizations 100. Let's collapse this content for now and let's import contacts. So I'm gonna do the same thing, import CSV and I'm gonna select my CSV and create a new table, which I would call contacts. I would select next 
And there we go. We have our 50 contacts right here. The first name, last name, company name, address. And notice that the last column is the company column, which is simple text for now. But I want to make sure that this is actually a relation to the organization 100 table. And a quick way to do that is to turn this into a relation column. So I'm going to go to change column type and select relation and select organizations 100 as the target relation. And now I can see that the correct companies were related in here. The only limitation that I see is that whenever a company contains a comma, that is not taken correctly by Coda. So in here, for example, this company McKinney, Riley and Day, I can see it is in the company table, but it is not correctly. So we need to manually set that up so that it becomes a relation correctly populated and I can see the rich data from the related table entry. And that is my import completed. I will then do a bit of data cleanup to make sure that all the columns are in the correct state and are of the correct column type. And an additional thing to know is that in case you already have a table in Coda and you want to import CSV data into that table, then you can go to options, select the three dots at the top right corner on the right hand side panel and select import CSV. This will prompt you with the same screening as I've shown you before, the import wizard, but you can select the file that you want to import the import location, so the exact table where you want to import that. And then you can select next and Coda will allow you to match each column from the CSV with the column in the Coda tables and make sure that you map the correct columns into the destination table. And this makes the import process very smooth as long as the CSV file that you have has a clear header row and it is formatted appropriately with each row containing data that corresponds to its header. And finally, when it comes to importing data from third-party tools with the native Coda import, let's focus on Notion, for example. If you want to import a Notion page into Coda, you can export that Notion page as HTML, including all the sub-pages within that page. And you can do that from the top right corner on the three dots of the page, and then import the HTML file into the Coda doc, and that will populate the page content automatically. When it comes to importing databases from Notion into Coda, you can export the database in CSV format from Notion and then follow the same process that I showed you in the video to import the CSV into Coda. And the same concepts apply to the other importers. There are a few differences for the specific tools. And whenever you click on them, you will see the guides and what to do to import the data from those tools into your Coda docs. And finally, in the pack section, you can see all the available packs that you can use within your code doc to sync data between tools. And packs are more useful when it comes to syncing data. And if you intend to continue using the third party tool together with Coda rather than replacing the tools, because Coda packs are an ongoing sync via the API. And that concludes the overview of how to import data into Coda with a particular focus on CSV files, which are one of the most popular file formats out there to import data and manipulate data across tools. Thanks for watching for now and see you in the next one.